we will be starting so, in yeah. are we so we are live we are live uh, right now uh, shadia on a social media platforms also so oh, we welcome okay. everyone who is uh, watching us on various social media platforms yeah shadia oh. over to you okay so everyone uh, welcoming you all a uh, very please good morning to all, one and all who have joined i would like to thank each and every one of you for being here on saturday morning with us though it's a time of festivities you will be all be very busy and occupied in your home but still here thank you so much to begin with allow me to introduce myself i shahzia sheik project manager at pharmacist academy will be your host for the webinar uh before starting the session uh, so you are very interested and excited about it uh just wanted to share a part that pharma state academy has recently launched humans of pharma because every story is different and so is every perspective humans of pharma will catch your pharma stories on career inspiring pharma journeys current affairs you might miss because of your hectic schedule and the books you should definitely know so before that can we have a glimpse of human of pharma to all of us it was a great one indeed so uh, as so here we have seen humans of pharma and here for a book launch the very first episode under humans of pharma today we will be having a glance at exploring how medical representative make a necessary medium for a pharmaceutical industry through the book medical representative an indispensable medium for the pharmaceutical industry by tushar nayak sir the book addressing the dilemma of now what after graduation as well as uh, the for the medical representative who are currently working this book is promising solution to all questions about kick starting your pharma career and growth from detailed job requirements and responsibilities to the structured insights into the pharma industry this book will surely give you a hand to make a decision you want to regret with real life experiences examples case studies from doctors you will be able to effectively deal with multiple hindrances in your professional journey as a medical representative so i have really talked about the book but how can i talk just about the art and not the artist so here the artist is i mean the author tushar nayak sir vice president marketing sales and uh, marketing and sales division at icpa health products sir has served as senior general manager sales and marketing of the bioation division of uh, immunology at zydus and also be sir headed the pan india marketing team at icp he will be responsible for marketing and product strategy for all product categories brand positioning and marketing expansion in conjunction with sale sir comes with a strong track back, uh, record in driving sales marketing launches his extensive pro uh, professional journey of more than 3 decades in the pharma industry started from a base level of mr reaching up to the position of now vice president marketing and sales he has worked with major mnc like may and baker sharing flow now mnc and indian mncs like cadilla now which is known as zydus and renbaxi and many more to name um over to you tushar sir thank you for being here and for thank the you. book as well 
Thank you, thank you, Sarjia, for uh, your kind words, Dr. Swati, Dr. Satish, and most uh, most uh, eminent uh, senior leaders of the pharma industry, Mr. Vikesh and uh, Vilas sir. Uh, thank you for giving the opportunity. In fact, it is surprise to me that Human Pharma launches today, and you have know, you have felt that my book can be tagged along with your Human Pharma launch. So I sincerely acknowledge uh, this gesture from Pharma Academy and Women's of Pharma for giving me this opportunity on auspicious day of Ganteras to take forward the momentum of this book and change the lives of many youngsters, those who want to build a career successfully in the pharma industry. Without talking further, uh, once again, Sarja, back to you. I am delighted with immense gratitude. Uh, humble sir, thank you so much. Uh, now we have talked about the author, the book. Now coming to the guest speakers, I wanted to extend my warm welcome to our two well-known speakers. Firstly, I wanted to talk about Professor Ulhas Khasani's. He is an associate dean of pharma management at IES Management College and Research Center. Saying more about him, he's an experienced associate dean with an demonstrated history of working in the pharma industry and management education, skill in marketing, sales, business development, and coaching for excellence. Not just in academia, but sir have served several roles. So firstly saying consultant to Rye Healthcare, Vice President Sales and Marketing and Cosme Pharma Laboratories, Director at Ranbaxi, GM Marketing at Leica Labs, and many more to name and mention. So, right way to say that he is a strong healthcare services professional. Thank you, Lars, sir, for being here. Thank you, Sazia. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for coordinating so well right from the beginning. And good morning to all of you, uh, Dr. Swati, uh, Ms. Anaswamy, and my friend Tushar. Uh, I'm delighted to be included in this uh, conversation today on a very special and a very auspicious occasion of Dhanteras for the inauguration of this book. And uh, it will be, it's going to be a great pleasure to share the platform with such stalwarts. Thanks a lot for adding me here in the meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lal, sir. Really humble for your work. Uh, going on forward with another speaker, uh, Mr. Anna Swami Videsh, sir. He's a successful senior commercial leader from the most admired Fortune 100 companies with more than 35 years of diverse experience in healthcare and FMCG industry. He has proven expertise in general management with a strong background in market creation and leadership development by unleashing the latent power of the organization. Solid experience in building strong leadership for brands across various categories. He's a passionate about adding value to both deserving and undeserved populace. He is known to be a strategic leader with the agility to go beyond the confines of the role. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you very much, Sazia. I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, this is a very, very important uh, moment. That's the reason when uh, uh, Mr. Tushar uh, Naik you know, talk to me about this and about his book. I thought uh, it deserves a golden day. That's why you are having here on Tanteras, right? So it's an important uh, event. So I'm very delighted to be part of this. And uh, I'm quite sure that the participants and the pharma industry will immensely benefit from the book uh, because rich experience has been put into the book. So we will talk about it as we go along. Thank you very much to... So we'll ask Dan Khanis, he's another senior in the industry. So I think, uh, thanks very much and looking forward to this meeting. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Anasami, sir. I really wanted to thank three of you. Uh, moving forward, uh, to the glimpse of what book holds for us, the book medical representative holds for us. So for that, we want Shah sir to go forward with the work presentation. Uh, we really wanted to see what we are getting from the work, what really it holds and what we'll be getting out of it. So Shah sir, 
So over to you. So Yeah, all of you can see this. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, it is visible. Sir. Yeah, it is yeah. visible. Yeah, so uh, once again, good morning, everybody. And uh, I will, I'll take you through the, through this book because uh, during this month, uh, this book was uh, by Maharashtra Governor uh, Sri Koshyari Ji. Because uh, straight away from the PR department, we have received this news. And thanks to my one of the best friend who is connected with the governor house, and they thought that uh, this is the this is something which has come for a lot of job opportunities can be created for the youngsters, and many youngsters can be attracted toward this great philanthropic industry uh, as we move forward. So that was the gesture. Now, with, before we going uh, to you know talk further, uh, I have encapsulated a couple of realities that medical representatives have existed ever since the pharmaceutical industry came into existence. Medical representatives are the most important and critical players and inter interface between medical fraternity and pharma industry. Today, close to six lakhs medical representatives are working across the Indian subcontinent. It is observed the top pharma players employ a field force of around 5,000 or more and reserve close to 20% or perhaps more of their total expenses on hiring and training them. And more than 60% of total promotional budget which we, we spend in the pharmaceutical industry is allocated to the field force activities. Of course, I think majority of the things Sadia has summarized about this book the main objective is to book is to create an awareness among the youngsters, not only the fresh graduates of pharmacy, MBA and the science graduates, but also for the medical representatives, those who have spent two to three years in the pharmaceutical industry as a medical reps, and they are looking for a to build successful career as they move forward in the pharmaceutical industry, right from the base level of MR, sky's the limit, where we have many examples in the industry to quote those who have grown from medical rep to even managing director, entrepreneur, executive director, and the vice president and senior vice president positions. Addressing the dilemma, now what? After graduation, as well as for medical representative, it is very, very important. Now, reading this book, they will certainly be not the clueless. From detailed job requirements, responsibilities, and structural insights, I have kept and captured each and every moment of my 35 years journey of pharmaceutical industry in this book. It's a real life experience and learnings. Major contributors, without that, my book would have never been successfully launched. Uh, none other than anybody, I think he's, uh, you can call him. President Emirates OPPI, former Vice Chairman Novartis, fatherly person, teacher, mentor, guide to many who have successfully created many, many leaders for the pharma industries, Mr. Ranjit Sani, sir, Mr. Sanjeev Dani, who spotted me to launch a super specialty business for Renpaxi, apart from their acute and chronic business. He's a chief operating officer and head formulation of Bingo Pharma. Thank you, Mr. Vijendra who has virtually doubled my enthusiasm level at every stage of my career whenever we have interacted at Renbaxi. He is currently President India Business in Tass Pharmaceutical Ahmedabad. Professor Roini Handa, perhaps the known icon in the immunology and rheumatology community, not only in India, but in Asia and globally. He is the most prominent professor of immunology and rheumatology from AIMS, currently is a senior consultant rheumatology in the press of Delhi. Ullas Karkhani, sir, perhaps when I was into my infancy in a pharmaceutical industry as a medical rep, though we have never worked together, but even from a distance, his contribution in making me a great professional today is substantial. Mr. Rajesh Vaidya, who was with us in Brand Taxi as an HR head, 
currently is the CHRO and head sustainability at Shilox India. Of course, medical reps and medical community goes hand in hand. Ever since I was a medical rep in pharmaceutical industry and I have reached at this level, many key opinion leaders of India with global stature, they have given their testimonials in this book and they have laid down very clearly what are their expectations from a medical rep when they meet them in clinic in their day-to-day -day practice. And many senior pharma buddies of mine, those who have grown with me from a base level of medical representative to senior leadership position, they have also given their exciting journey testimonials in this book. So this book is a classical companion of all gurus, all senior leaders, doctors, and of course, there are people, those who have grown from level of medical rep to a senior leadership position. Now, just brief about chapters of this book. I have pre-independence day, since those days, I have captured the highlights about existence and evolution of Indian pharma industry, introduction of medical representatives as an indispensable medium, COVID-19, which has virtually changed the lives of us, which we have never anticipated, and its impact on pharma industry, eligibility to become a medical representative, roles and responsibilities clearly defined, working hours and traveling involved in medical representative jobs, what is more important, since you are meeting a doctors, synonymously they are considered as a god. When you go and meet them, what are manners, etiquettes and dressing sense which medical rep representative requires, pay scale, salary, rewards, recognition of medical representative. There was a myth, even in the minds of the doctor, that how much medical representative can earn. I want to break that myth. For everyone who feels that medical reps are least paid, unpaid or underpaid, today the fresh joinee, till the five years of experience, the salary of medical representative and the CTC which they earn, it is as good as or rather more than any railway employees, bank employees or three to five years of engineer which they earn. I am talking only about CTC. Now this earning also includes incentives, rewards, cash rewards, and many more other recognition which medical representative can earn. Growth opportunity. There are very few exceptions in this industry, especially in the government and semi-government job. Starting from a base level, they reach somewhere. You don't have this, uh, you know, limitations when you become a medical representative and you want to build your successful career in the pharma industry. Uh, career prospect of a medical reps. It is not only a medical reps who can reach to the highest level in the organization. But once you are a medical representative, you are qualified and doing specialized postgraduate course of pharmaceutical management. There is a many things which has evolved. I think Ulas Karkani sir is with us today, perhaps, while question answer session, he may throw lights. They also require to spend two years on the field to take over the responsibility even graduating from management institute at the medical representatives now they can go into a brand management they can go into a training they can go into hr they can go into lnd and there are various levels of opportunities which medical representative has to grow in the pharmaceutical industry in the different area of their talent expertise and of course commitment and dedication this is just a choreograph where one can reach from this level to this level. Sometimes it happens that from this, you can shift to a marketing, you can shift to training, you can shift to L&D, you can shift to CRM sales, which is the evolving sector, perhaps in the pharmaceutical industry by virtually with every company, since industry is moving from brand, features, benefits to customer and a patient centric model. So I wish long live medical representatives, best wishes to them and this community, which I will always rejoice, me being a medical representative which at this stage. This book is available on Amazon, Amazon Kindle. This is the first seller book at Amazon within just one month of launch. 
one can connect with me these are my social media touch up my mobile my gmail and of course pharma academy is now a partner colleague whatever you say if you want to get in touch with me with this i sincerely extend my gratitude to each one of you thank you very much for your patient hearing thanks a lot Thank you, Tushar sir. It was a wonderful, insightful of the book. Really, really was. Uh, I really wanted to welcome. Ulhas sir wanted to say something. Sorry. Ulhas sir, you wanted to say something, right? No, no, it's okay. Uh, we continue. Sorry. No, 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 no. I was just asking about uh, the insights that he was oh, yes. giving. That was your. What's your <laughs> opinion and insights for that? Sure, sure. I think. Uh... listening very intently to the introduction given by tushar uh, it took me back to my days and it was almost 50 years back that i joined the pharmaceutical industry starting my career as a medical representative and it's true that you know not me there are thousands and thousands of people who have built careers starting at a fundamental level of medical representative today as i am responsible in a mba school business school where we recruit pharmacy graduates and from there we groom them to become the uh, pharma professionals in mba course still the emphasis is on spending at least 1 to 2 years hard in hardcore selling that's what is the beauty of this profession it's a wonderful thing to happen to anybody Who aspires to make it big in pharma industry? Thank you, Sharjah. Thank you, Lal sir. Anna Swami sir, you have a say for that. Well, uh, I can only add to all the wisdom of the uh, Tushar or uh, Lal Karkanes. Uh, first thing I think people who want to be in this industry have to recognize this business is out of heart. This is not. if somebody does not bear uh, patient care in the center of the heart and if you don't care for it i don't think i would ever tell any representative to join this industry this is about treating this is about caring this is about making a difference to the people uh, who are suffering right so it's a big responsibility it is just not a job unlike many other jobs Uh, this job carries a lot of responsibility you got to be so ethical honest with your uh, claims what you want your doctor to do right so it's a hell of a lot of responsible job uh, people need to be proud of the fact they are in this industry and this is not a typical selling selling job right this this is like transfer of knowledge to A doctor who are getting updated and who is going to make a difference to a patient, right? People like you and me are could be a patient at some point of time. I would like to see a doctor prescribing the right drugs so that I get benefited by the right treatment, so that I get back on my feet, right? So it's a very very important profession and rightly so. That's the reason why I like the idea. A book is being written about medical representative. It's long overdue. We need to put them on pedestal. and we need to make sure make make them accountable and it's a wonderful job i would always encourage people if you have it in your heart to care for the patients please thank you sir thank you so much um going forward let's we have an introduction with the what books hold for us we have the opinion views of senior people like ulaz sir and anas swami sir uh there are few questions still left you know uh, for all of us for a person like me who really have you know grown to know about this field through uh, pharmacy academy platform now i'm here learning through all of you and gaining so much things uh, so much knowledge from the senior people like you three uh, so some are questions uh, firstly i will start with you know uh, since you have talked about this ulhas sir so um, you being in academia for a long and dealing with the students day in and day out uh, what will a student choose a career why 
like i mean what and why us will what will help a student choose a career as a medical representative okay uh career as a medical representative is a journey and uh, when this journey in pharma industry begins at the level of a medical representative uh, one should take enormous pride you know actually in uh, how does the industry and how important you are in the industry uh, how vital role you play in an industry if there are i i believe there are a lot of uh, freshers and a lot of uh, pharmacy students or the ones who have just uh, uh, passed out and looking for a career in pharma the general understanding of pharma industry relates to about discovery development and manufacturing of pharmaceutical products but mind you that pharmaceutical product also gets sold without that the discovery development and manufacturing becomes null and it is that vital part which medical reps do on behalf of the company so that's the extremely critical role that they play in the business of pharmaceuticals the pharmacy graduates invariably are made to believe that pharma industry is all about pharmaceutical science i would like them to understand that the industry is about pharmaceutical business of that science and therefore that business is well understood when you work as a medical representative in fact if we look at the pharma industry today the products are undifferentiated the composition the prices the promotion the strategies are all common what differentiates one company from another company is actually the effectiveness of the medical representative of your company so that's the most crucial role that the mrs have in the pharmaceutical the success of pharmaceutical industry i would say and therefore they are indispensable they are irreplaceable believe me over the years under either compulsory compulsory situation or as a innovation companies did attempt to make or replace the mrs none finally succeeded and all are convinced that this is an irreplaceable force and yes they are most valuable because these very mrs eventually grow in the organizations and in the industry to get to go at the higher positions higher responsibilities and contribute to the success so they are the backbone they are the backbone of the industry that's all i will say thank you shalji thank you lal sir thank you so much um you know talking about sales and everything you know driving the sales part driving the marketing and everything which i'm learning also learning over here uh, some question are still left as a you know professional pharma professional uh, uh anna swami sir if i would have to ask you uh, you know with the strong track back uh, record in driving sales and marketing in pharma business and now coming to a senior leadership role what are the changing patterns if we talk about medical reps or and even any mid level manager in the industry see uh, i i would say there is a big change that has taken place in the last 7 uh, to 8 years uh this particularly uh, i would say context of india where the digital revolution is happening at a rapid pace and during covid uh i think we saw a phenomenal change in the way in which people communicate people uh you know interact primarily through the digital medium right so one of the very key requirement i would say is that uh, for the new traffic that's coming into the pharma industry they better get you get to know what is this whole digital revolution that's happening correct right? uh, whether it's ai whether it's bot whether it is a machine learning you know people might think that it's only for techies but frankly in my opinion this is not a techie now the future is all going to be a sales rep 
is expected to, if you are not going to be step ahead and get to know what's happening, uh, you may end up in uh, the old way of doing things might change, right? Now today, uh, most of the doctors want to communicate uh, through digital modes, whether it's a, a telereps, uh, in US it's already happening in a large scale, particularly for the specialty products. Uh, but in India, the relationship still matters a lot. But however, uh, what I would strongly recommend is that anybody who is getting into this industry, I would strongly recommend they get to know what's happening in the area of digital. Familiar yourself with, uh, uh, with the changing trends and dynamics rather than just being swept away by the technology and not knowing what's happening. So that's the first and fundamental change that I would ask you to uh, everyone to be aware. And you're all, many of the young people are from the digital world. It's not going to be very difficult, but that's in the, that's happening. Whether it is, uh, you know, I've been uh, mentoring a couple of startups. Uh, they are doing huge amount of work in this area of uh, connecting the doctors, connecting to the patients, and the kind of content that they are creating, they're all happening at a rapid pace. So I would suggest that uh, watch out in the next five years time, the world is going to be very different. So medical rep of the past, well, you need to have a passion, you need to have a heart for the patient care, uh, but not necessarily a relationship and jostling with the doctors is going to get you business. But you're also going to be technologically enabled, technologically savvy, so I would strongly recommend that uh, people start paying attention to this. Great, thank you so much, Anupam sir. Really, it was uh, you know a, a you know a deal that is coming in that we are really into the digital world, um, and pharma has to adapt it eventually, obviously. Uh, with that, uh, you know. Uh, that questions come up, uh, pop up, you know, every time when we talk about the conventional to digital uh, part. Uh, Tushar, sir, this is for you. Uh, you know, what idols can be adapted as a pharma industry uh, shift from conventional to digital domain? Like the MR now in the physical situation, shifting to virtually meet the doctor now. It's really, uh, you know, becoming to the more to the digital side. Uh, how it is, you know, relating and how the book is integrating them to that yeah. part. So see, basically, uh, as Adnan Swami sir said, said uh, I echo echo uh, his uh, his thoughts and the way his observation, uh, which is very very important. See, to be uh, technology came in existence. Uh, I think it's almost eight to ten years ago. Uh, and uh, people, those who are into a business or medical representative or a pharmaceutical company, those, those who are into a patient-centric module, uh, say for example in immunology, those who are marketing biologics, those who are marketing anti-cancer drugs, those who are into a renal management or uh, kidney transplants and all the other diseases, uh, they, were, they were already adopted this module of uh, virtual continuity and patient-centric model in terms of whether apps, whether it's online or whether it's a website, whatever you say. COVID has forcibly brought an impact on the pharmaceutical industry, sales and marketing because face-to-face -face interaction was impossible. Uh, nobody had anticipated that. So first 30 days or 40 days, Industry, those who were not into a digital marketing or setting, they did not know how to react. Now, during this 30, 40 days, they themselves have prepared and they came back uh, with a lot of force in terms of virtual engagement with the doctors as well as patients. Now, I think five years ago, one of the book, uh, which uh, I have seen from our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, uh, saying that if you want to be globally acclaimed, you have to be online 24 hours. Uh, now, when you are in the pharmaceutical industry and a patient-centric business, you have to be 24 online. So, as Anna Swami said, also, 
Anna Submission said that medical representative has to be techno savvy, number one. Number two, they need to be digitally trained. Secondly, most of the uh, pharmaceutical companies, they are on online reporting. They have iPads given, even in clinic detailing is happening uh, with iPad and uh, online. Advantage, immediately you can facilitate with the content and share with the doctor, number one. Number two, uh, what is delivered virtually, perhaps doctors may or not potential able to retain those contents. So it can go as a key messages, it can go as a review article, because as gradually we move forward, we have to shift from this printing material and everything. But one thing is seen, still 20% doctors across the country, even though the life is back to almost normal, they are not willing to meet medical representatives on one-to-one -one basis. So I think customers are important, patients are important. So as we move forward, there has to be a classical mix of digital and physical. What we say is a digital approach. Perhaps it will help the pharmaceutical industry and medical representative to move forward successfully. Thank you, Vishal, sir. Really, it was an insightful part. Yes, we are leading to the digital and it is very important here in the pharma industry as well. So, um, moving forward with all the thoughts that we have gathered uh, with the basic part of the MR role to how the things are changing in the pharma industry. Um, Anna Swami, sir, uh, pharma is experiencing a sales uh, representative over capacity, or as we can say, too many cooks spoil the broth part. Uh, is it implied that we lack skills when discussing overload or are we lacking some more scientifically educated sales representative? Now, apart when we talk about no, I don't know. Your, your, your question has a couple of uh, intertwined questions, okay? So I'm going to de-skeletonize the question first. So first and foremost, uh, do we have an overload of medical representative? I don't know where this question is coming from. See, uh, a representative appointed by the company based on what they called the optimization of the field force based on the number of doctors, ABC classification, what is the business put in? There is a model available based on that rep, rep is allotted, right? There is a return of investment and how much time it takes. It depends on the quality of uh, specialty or a generic product. So I don't think uh, there's an overload, but there could be an overload of companies, pharma companies that has, that are entered into the industry. Maybe that is the problem. Uh, when I said problem, in a sense, uh, I don't think we need so many companies to serve the same generic products, right? Uh, so I think that is an issue which has to be tackled at a very different level. Second uh, que and question to your uh, you know answer to the question is on the sales reps, right? See, first and foremost, every good companies have a very good training uh, team. So every company has got a good training team. Like, you know, it varies from a 30 days training to 45 days training. So as long as people are trained to deliver messages and to do what we call the integrity selling. So at the end of the day, this is not about selling. As I earlier mentioned, this is about patient, right? So you got to be true to what you are saying or what you are delivering. So the question is that there are some companies who don't do proper training. You end up in having classical uh, sales people rather than having a medical representative. Medical representative is a class of part. The reason is people who are trained who know the subject when they're having a conversation with the doctor, they're on an even keel on that subject. Correct? So whether you're talking about an uh, anti-infective, we will be discussing about the anti-infective space. So they will train to have a conversation about their molecule, what are side effects, what are the implications and all those stuff. So frankly, in my opinion, the training uh, is essential and there are regular training some companies give. Some companies are on a higher end of training. Some companies are on a very low training. So the question is that 
a rep coming to meet a doctor without a training in my opinion is a disaster okay uh, i don't think even those people don't have a right to stand in front of a doctor because at the end of the day you are an ambassador uh, to a company where it does something to save the lives of people right this is not like selling potato chips right uh, this is not selling some sugar water right this is about saving lives of people so you got to know the subject very well the drug that you are promoting you need to know the contraindication you need to know the side effects you need to know what are the off label claims so this is a very serious uh, subject this is a serious job this is not a casual job so what i would tell you is that people are saying that uh, if you are if people are meeting some uneducated untrained people in my opinion that bad that's sad for the industry but i would always encourage people invest in training invest in update invest in upgradation in knowledge as a company and that's the only way we will raise the status otherwise we'll end up in having a transaction uh, based organization which is not good for the industry this is not selling detergent soap right i'm not saying anything wrong with the detergent soap but i'm saying this is about uh, selling some serious stuff right you are you are making sure that patients come on the field so i would say two things training 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 constantly make sure your reps are well trained that this area manager train regional managers are trained the company has to focus and invest if any company is not investing in training then i think we need to challenge the question uh, thank you anasam sir really uh, it was a nice uh, you know part that yes it is very important to this uh, though you have covered a major part that yes how it is important uh, how training and everything is important yes it is not like selling potato chips obviously uh, so when we come to uh, if we say ulha sir what do you think about how important the medical representative role is to the pharma industry success or even uh, a minute uh, a small pharma firm as well even they are having the same thing okay uh saji i think uh, i i uh, in in the in my previous turn i told you that you know that's the most crucial role that the medical reps have in the business of pharmaceuticals uh, i i'm i'm very happy to i was very happy listening to mr vaidish when he highlighted that you know there is a great need for well trained professional medical reps natives and sales forces i think that is one of the shortcomings that you see everywhere barring very few handful of companies who are committed to giving or providing a professionally trained competent and uh, well behaved mrs like tushar made a beginning saying that uh, the mrs today or people in general are either unaware or they are ill informed or misinformed about the job and the role and the future of a medical representative i think the industry vast players in the industry are also responsible for towards ensuring that you know the professionalism is uh, imbibed the professionalism is uh, given imparted to the medical reps when they are inducted in the profession a very high level of training is something which is necessary uh, because the handful of companies who are committed to this produce extraordinary people extraordinary successful not just medical reps but also the professionals and you know the industry depends so much on medical reps i'll just give you one instance for example you look at any company the largest number of employees ratio of employees compared to the total ratio of employees comes from the sales force almost 50% 60% 70% of the employees are sales force so that is the importance of medical rep and the role that they have so unless we take care of the companies take care of these people groom them well give them adequate skills knowledge it would be difficult for companies to succeed and make the impact on doctors and that's the reason for we see doctors at times avoid medical reps if they are not properly groomed and properly trained 
I think that's a extremely important, extremely sensitive part. I'm sure leaders like uh, Mr. Vaidesh can influence the industry to focus because there are many reputed, I'm saying, you know, there are big companies, large companies, reps that I see in the market. I am, I am old man, so I go to my doctor more often now. Okay. And when I see the medical reps waiting for the call, believe me, I'm, it's awful. It is shocking. It is appalling. I mean, the kind of attire, the behavior, the uh, grooming, there's a lot more that we can do. I mean, they, see, unless we do all that, a medical rep will not be able to have his full impact on the doctors in the chamber. So uh, that's what I feel. Uh, all of us need to do in whichever uh, possible way. Maybe I'm sure even your own uh, institute uh, has a role to play in uh, creating this awareness and grooming these people. And I, I think you are already engaged in doing that. Right? So I'll be delighted to be a part of that anytime. Thank you so Thank much, Rajan. Thank you so much. Uh, before I moving uh, move forward, actually, uh, there's a comment, Tushar sir, for from Amit Vishwakarma. Uh, Tushar sir, I remember my days of working under you, where I learned a lot about selling and managing uh, key opinion leaders. This book would definitely help new and experienced reps to groom with right knowledge and guidance. Thank you. It's a yeah. thank you message to you. Yeah, best best wishes, Amit. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of best wishes coming to you and your work. Uh, obviously, uh, I think you want to say something also. No, I mean, my goodness, uh, you have question. No, I think I just ahead. wanted to. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now you can talk. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, today it was very wonderful time when I spent uh, almost 11 months here uh, yeah. with you. Under, under, under your guidance. It was very much helpful for my entire career journey, how to manage skills, how to talk to them, and how to percolate, percolate the right knowledge uh, uh, about the product and uh, uh, while selling uh, either scientifically or you know, uh, from sales point of view. What are the key parameters that we need to uh, tell about the product? That is very much important. As you mentioned in your uh, 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 presentation, uh, like, Person should be groomed with each and everything, not only with the dress, but with the knowledge, right knowledge. That is very much important. Sir. So, uh, thank you very much, sir, for uh, giving all those uh, you know, hard earned skills to us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Uh, thank you so much. Also. Uh, you know, going forward with some more questions, I'll hold my questions for a while. Uh, so, there's a question uh, from three of you. Um, today, when information is available at fingertips for doctor, how do you see the future for medical reps in long term? Now, uh, we can start. May I respond? May I respond? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes sure. uh, understand one thing. Uh, doctors are well informed. Many doctors, so that's why I always divide the category of doctors into parts. One is KOL, what we call in pharma industry is key opinion leaders. I have to give one example of the father of immunology and rheumatology in India, Dr. Anand Malviya at Delhi. He has a group of almost 1,000 rheumatologists and physicians. Unless and until he has an email group, unless and until he does not share with them every day two important perspectives and developments in the field of rheumatology and immuno immunology. At the age of 80 years, he never goes to sleep. Now, Dr. Malvia has an exception on one side who wants to educate and up, uh, you know, up front the, uh, you know, uh, enriching the academics of the medical profession. A pharma industry also needs to move in that perspective. Now, basically speaking, KBL, who are a key business leaders, they have absolutely no time other than their patients. I have seen doctors, while checking patients, they virtually go to sleep. 
that is what we call them as the key business leaders that is kbls now educating kols or helping them i don't think we need any intervention unless and until some breakthrough or new chemical entity is created by the company but when it comes to kbl they need break they need some recreation time to interact with their colleagues and friends including kols of course so perhaps there are certain platforms which pharmaceutical company needs to have and it will have to be there because kbl those who are busy in seeing patients they don't have time to even learn so for them i don't know to what extent virtual platform will help them but they need knowledge they need updation that can happen only with one to one interaction or some meetings with the like minded friends that pharmaceutical industry needs to identify that what we exactly did during covid time that you know every doctor irrespective of specialty per day they had 10 webinars invitations now which one to attend and which one not to attend so what we did we have engaged couple of doctors when i was at zydus that five like minded dermatologists whenever they have time 20 minutes interactions and our success rate which we have achieved was perhaps 100 times more better than the webinars because once you are on webinar you do not know you have no eye to eye contact you have people those those, those who are joining from the remote places they don't know each other you can't judge the body line language and response so it has its own whims and fancies but to replace peer force totally as we move forwards in sharing and disseminating knowledge to the key opinion leaders or the key business leaders i think as videsh sir has said maybe 5 years 6 years down the line paradigm shift may come but currently digital and digital should go in hand to hand at the moment ratio depending upon your portfolio depending upon your organization may vary from organization to organization that's what i can say thank you vishal so for your insights uh, i would really love if uh, ulha so and anna swami so you can add a few your few of your thoughts to this that when information is available at fingertips for doctor how we can see the future of medical reps in long term ulha so uh, i think tushar has uh, said i i agree with it fine i have more of much to add beyond that thank you very much oh thank you so much uh, anna swami so see the one other thing that people need to recognize is the digital when say information is at a fingertips see i don't know whether you know there is this whole continuum called data information knowledge and wisdom right so the information may be available knowledge may not be available the job of a medical representative or the company is to take this information that a doctor has converted into a knowledge and convert it into wisdom because the wisdom comes out of the fact a rep meets more than 150 doctors right and he sees every day's practice and he is actually like a butterfly taking the pollen and he can actually pollinate the other doctors many doctors don't know what's happening with the with with, with the disease state that's happening who is doing what best practices right so one of the big role that's what i keep telling you know medical rep job is not just go there to take a bag uh and then go there and stand there and do some two minutes uh, rattling of of something that has been said no you have a far bigger role so make sure if a doctor says i know then you may need to qualify what he may not know like for example if my augmentin he says a developing drug resistant then you need to produce a data that says how it's not producing drug resistance and share the experience of other doctors how it's helping the patient to come recover within 4 to 5 days time right so your job is to give confidence to the doctors about the drug or about therapy that you are promoting so i would encourage every rep to not to limit themselves to this 3 minutes talk 
and then finish your seven calls and go please blossom grow as a bigger bigger person in this industry you are very important to the industry yeah don't limit yourself i think that's a, that's really a good a quote to say and you know quote to follow uh, for the medical reps and everyone in the pharma industry yes don't limit yourself uh, we are here for learning as well uh so uh, anasami sir adding more to your uh, you know the part you are emphasizing on the training part uh, the one of uh, participants have said prita dimar as rightly mentioned on training necessities usually companies focus only on product knowledge and not on soft skills can you suggest how to acquire or get trained for soft skills i would say even doctors require soft skill training for working with their patient any programs available or anything you wanted to suggest them yeah i, I know uh, it's it's a what i'm sorry to ask this question or people it's uh, a challenge right it's a challenge it's not uh, i don't think it's only with the sales reps i have seen it with the managers who don't know how to uh, present in the case what we call the storytelling right so i used to find the mothers do a very good job of storytelling to the children right now if you really want to learn how to communicate how to do, you speak to your mother and find out how she is doing and i'm saying it not as a joke but i'm saying seriously what are the thing that we all need to learn don't leave it to companies to improve your uh, soft skills right please find time to invest time right there are so many courses like for example when i was growing up in my early days i used to invest on my own going and learning going and doing public speaking course going and attending certain communication workshops uh, assertiveness workshop negotiation workshop why do you need to wait for companies to do it i do understand the companies need to do it but you know i am a strong believer in your own self development you don't don't wait for someone to tell you how you should know how to communicate right and so one of the important point that i will always tell people is uh, if you believe that you need to uh, improve yourself why are you waiting right why are you waiting if you know that this is something i'm lacking why are you waiting you are spending so much money on various other stuff right going out for a movies or going out for entertainment take this money and put it in invest in your self development so i strongly recommend to everyone please invest your time in self development of course so i do understand soft skill is a big bigger issue uh, particularly when it comes down to western soft skill right uh, communication in english right is not our language right everybody somebody coming from uh, middle part of the country they are very good in hindi They're very good in their own culturally they are all very good it's unfortunately english is a medium uh, which is used so it's you know we all have to equip yourself to be good in the language and ability to you need to practice you need to invest right i didn't become an expert overnight i invested trained myself spent time before any board meeting i practice uh, at least about 2 uh, to 3 hours my presentation right even today i don't go blind so i would say for rep if you are going and meeting a doctor please practice take your ipad and look in front of the ipad practice your call right ask your manager to say how is the call let him give an input please work on your self development don't wait for somebody else to solve your problem am i is that is that making sense yes totally i i, I think it's uh, it's really is the thing practice is the key training yourself and upgrading actually yourself is really a part uh, where some people really are lagging behind uh, you know it in like you rightly said that uh, we, we are doing movies we are going everything but not investing in ourselves it's really a back thing it has to be you know upgrade it's time to upgrade ourselves uh when we talk about more on this uh you know uh to even this question is for three of you each year you know thousands of students graduate from college many of whom may not be fortunate enough to have mentors or even uh, don't know how to start their professional careers 
uh, from your experience, from all of your three experience, how this problem can be solved? It's a general life one. Uh, we can start with Ulhas, sir. Yeah. I think uh, the uh, the beginning can be made only with a desire from within. It's a very, very important mm. force which makes us the best learners. So one is, as a beginner, I'm saying in the professional life and a professional career, one must dream. One must think of what I would like to be, what I would love to be, and whom would I like to emulate as an example. Believe me, I mean, uh, all of us uh, have learned more from our surroundings than from our formal education. And that situation has not changed and will not change forever. And therefore, the people who are, uh, who have impressed me or people who have, who are performing uh, in front of me, uh, these are the people whom I think I should really look forward to picking up my way of learning. Uh, we all, I, I mean, my bosses used to always tell me, you know, that the fieldwork is the best university. We learn from doctors, we learn from competitors, we learn from chemists, we learn from dealers, right? So even for the beginners, I think you look around, your own friends, seniors, your classmates, your relatives who have done well, get inspired and decide what you would like to do. I feel that is the best way to decide how do I build myself for the future. In my business school also, while grooming for which, which is one of my fundamental responsibilities, I make a beginning with this thought always that you can't be, you can't have a box and you cannot have, you know, steps one, two, three, four. It's just something which must come with a internal inspiration about what you would like to do. Shazia, that's where I will leave it for the other two experts to give their views. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Raza. Really, uh, we have got one part, uh, Kapil, that is, it starts from within. Yes, it does. And we need to follow that. Uh, next, uh, Tushar, sir, your insights on this. Yeah, I mean, I think whatever Ulas sir has said, I totally echo. Uh, in my case, when enjoying my final year BSc vacation, uh, one gentleman, why gentleman? Somebody knocked the door around lunchtime. None other than my cousin brother, who was a medical representative in Fairfax. And while interacting with him, he told me, uh, buddy, this is your last vacation. What, what you have decided to do? Trust me, I was clueless. But knowing me from childhood, my go-getter approach and the kind of uh, you know, personality which I had, he says, uh, you can be highly successful in a pharmaceutical industry. His name is Bilesh Desai. Today he is in Orlando, retired, enjoying life. But he came to me as an angel. Now, had it not come, perhaps even till my result came and, and he ensured that I joined this profession before my results came out. And I was told in Gifik Pharma by Mr. Dilip Doshi, who was my district manager, that he said, look, Tushar, if your result doesn't come positive, uh, you will be losing this job. And I said, perhaps you might have to create more positions for me, but I'm confident that I won't lose my job. That was my answer. Even today, I interview any candidate at any stage, whether it's a fresh candidate, whether it's an experienced candidate, as Ullah Sar has said, I ask them, today you are here. If you become part of my team and esteem organization, where you see yourself three years from now? So, you know, you come to know whether the candidate is visionary, he is ambitious, he has aspiration to grow. Then if they answer, I ask them after five years. If they answer, I answer after set 10 years. So, you know, you have to decide the way, even if the candidate is not selected, when you are sitting to hire somebody, you have to trigger their thoughts. Maybe they may, they may improve, they may learn from this interaction. 
Uh, there are there are so many managers or senior leaders I have seen in the industry. Unfortunately, they interact for three minutes, five minutes. Either they talk to somebody, they talk on mobile, they sign the paper. You know, I mean, it doesn't give any positive feedback when you when you seek for an evaluation of any youngsters or senior professionals. Give them enough attention, even if they are rejected. Learn to give them feedback that they still need time. Maybe after six months, one year, once you are ready, we we'll come. So I think, as Sarah said, even Vijesh Sarah said, lot of responsibility lies on a senior leaders of the pharmaceuticals industry how to motivate people and trigger their thoughts. That so that they can think big, they can have aspirations to grow. That's what I can say. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, coming to Anasami, sir, your insight on this. Sir. Well, uh, I can only add on a few points more than what uh, experts have said. See, first and foremost, uh, is there a need for a institute, a kind of a training institute for all the reps or the mentors all you know I, there is a need there is no doubt about that we are talking about lakhs of people are in this industry is there an opportunity maybe as an industry one needs to look at investing in a uh, what i call it as a uh, uh, finishing school as they say <laughs> is there an opportunity for us to set up maybe as an industry one should look at that if there is an opportunity after having said that uh, I also tell people is that uh, there is a very good Zen master saying. It's called "teacher will appear when a student is ready." So, uh, you, you know, the, you don't need to look for it. As long as you're ready for it, you will find some mentor. Some you'll start reaching out to the right people. I'm not exaggerating, but that's the way it is. That's the way it works. Now, people say somebody has to come. Spoon feed me, then I will wake up. I'll get an awareness that I need to become salesperson. It doesn't work like that. So you need to be ready for uh, to meet the guru or the teacher or the mentor, right? What does it mean? But what it means is that there are three things that one needs to have. One is attitude. You need to be having a great attitude towards the life. What you want to do, right? There are some things which you may not know exactly what I'm going to do, but you need to have a positive attitude, right? And hunger for knowledge. Whatever you have learned, learn it well, right? In school, college, whatever you study, study it well. If if you don't apply yourself, know what you are supposed to know, then I don't think you you stand a chance to win in a in the marketplace, correct? And third one is the skill. The skill generally get this is what I call it the ask, right? Attitude, skill, and knowledge. Attitude and knowledge is in your hand. Skill is something that. Whichever industry you go, the skill generally get imparted because you can't just like that, you know, selling skill you learn by attending a university, right? As uh, Sir Bhai was mentioning, that his district manager Doshi, right? Now that those are the kind of people uh, whom whom you need to spend time and learn the skill. They are people who are going to tell you uh, how to get your skill. There are companies investing in training, so that's how you learn the skill. But very important thing is that your attitude. You got to stay positive, and you got to say, "I'm going to win. I'm going to learn, and hunger for knowledge." I'm telling you, there's no, there's no stoppage. Now we can continue to talk about having institute training and all the stuff, but uh, in coming back to my old point, everything starts with you. Yeah, it starts with you and ends with you. Uh, true, true, uh, sir. Uh, we have some questions coming up. Uh, also, if anybody has any questions or wanted to discuss with the speakers, yes, you're now welcome. Um, we have a question about about having a topic in the book on grooming medical rep for the next level because right now there is severe dearth of good first line managers. It's from Sunil Kubal. तो शास्त्र दस पंती या साजिया I I'm sorry can you just repeat the question yeah uh it's what about having a topic in the book on grooming medical rep for the next level because right now there is severe dearth of good first line manager it's from a Sunil Kumar 
see basically i i i did mention the level at which and the skills required to go from one level to another whether it is in sales marketing or any other area where you want to grow uh, well uh, many times what happens uh, perhaps the challenges which i have come across in my career that often uh, senior leadership or hr they are misinterpreting the high performers and the people those who are likely to be promoted to the next level of first or a second line they put first criteria i had my difference of opinion and number of times of course performance is the key deliverables are the key but if you say has he been performer since last 3 years as a 100 percent now this number game you know which is which is going on in the pharmaceutical industry so relevant important but what is important that whether the person many times what happens when we look at 100 percent performance we lose the best of medical representative and we are the worst of the managers now this balance and the criteria needs to be classified very very clearly many times the biases are there so what things we have implemented or i have implemented as a senior leader when it comes to a final decision other than me or my national sales manager evaluating the first line managers i was inviting my colleagues on a parallel level from the other business units in order to avoid the biases so majority of the issues are still still there because uh, managers first they need to own the people to take a sense of ownership of a medical member that bias is favoritism i always tell that no nothing impresses me two things impresses to me one is your attitude and another is your deliverables nobody is near and dear to me so i i have always practiced at all the levels i have gone in my life but yes i think this question needs to be carefully uh, you know answered carefully investigated and when you promote a manager perhaps your guideline and criteria is to change uh, not it should not be loose it should never be loose Great, great. Uh, totally agree with you, Mr. Um, uh, coming about again. Uh, if any one of the participants want to interact and a question, have any questions to the speakers, uh, you can raise hand or type in your question. We can we will unmute for you with the interaction for the panel. If not, we can move forward. Uh, though in the meantime, I would like again uh, to Chasa for you. Uh, it's just a comment from Amit Vishwakarma again uh, that he totally agreed to provide candid feedback and area improvement after interviews or at whenever possible. This definitely help people to identify their area of improvement, and he would not repeat the same in future. I think it's uh, to both you and Anna Swami sir, uh, as you have. Directed in the previous question. Thank you so much, Amit, for your comment. Uh, if we uh, don't have any questions, we can proceed further. Uh, yes, Adiya, I don't think there is any question right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, Swati here. Swati here. Uh, <laughs> nice uh, way you conducted the session, Shazia, and the wonderful interaction from all the three speakers that we had today. Uh, Vedesh sir, uh, Ulhas sir, Tusha sir, awesome. Uh, uh, there's just one uh, idea that uh, I was just listening to it very diligently that how we are taking this profession forward. We keep you know coming across a lot of speakers and industry leaders who talk about this profession evolving into. a highly skilled profession so currently what this job is attracting is not very good talent and that is the main problem when we are asking them to skill up we are asking them to get trained ulhas sir you are running that institution you may be seeing what is actually happening 
um, at Farmer State Academy also, when uh, students are asking us, uh, we have created course related to MR. But uh, you see, uh, there are cost issues, there are time issues, there are job opportunity issues that they are asking us. So we felt that we need to, you know, glamorize at least this profession. Uh, where these sir actually pointed out a very uh, important uh, insight uh, about this uh, profession that in all probability, most of the companies have taken it as a sales job, a very generic sales job. Rather, in pharma, it is a very specialized medical representative job. Highly skilled and knowledgeable people should be coming and interacting with doctors here, not selling biscuits or something. No offense to that, but here we are talking about medicines. So my uh, just a point was there that what can be done to at least add a pint of glamour, like an MBA into MR medical rep, what, what can be done, Ulasar, especially for you, this question as an acad academician who have been there. We need to attract talent, uh, which is also self-learning talent, who wants to learn uh, uh, by themselves, who want to pursue a career in this, majorly are forced into this profession as we have seen a lot of people uh, uh, telling us about this. But what, what do we need to do uh, as a uh, as in academia to attract the right talent in this profession? To attract the right talent? Yes, sir. Uh, I would look at it a little differently, Dr. Swati. Uh, what we, like I'm, you know, I represent the academia in this discussion and therefore uh, we receive, we get the aspirants, right? And therefore, you know, uh, every year as the aspirants enter into academia, uh, we look at their profiles and their suitability and their current skill sets. Uh, and accordingly, we uh, look at also the requirement of the industry and start giving them the inputs for grooming. That's the approach which we have. Okay. Uh, in the process, of course, we involve a lot of uh, industry experts. Uh, our lot of patrons, uh, engage them in variety of uh, assignments, projects, uh, by which they get a much wider exposure and they learn. That's the uh, approach, uh, Dr. Swati, that we have taken. Okay, I'm saying from the academia point of view. Uh, but I still agree that, you know, when it comes to the meeting the requirements of the industry, uh, we may still fall short of the requirements. But giving these people exposure on professional platforms in the uh, company of professionals is something which I think is one of the good methods of uh, giving them, making them, you know, right fit for the industry. That's how, that's my view of this. Thank you, Lasse. Basically, the industry academia gap that we will have oh, yes. to oh, yes. uh, right, uh, 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 see in the right uh, spirit here that how industry should be coming forward forth also to you know uh, uh, make this uh, uh, very valued job right thank you so much it was a wonderful uh, experience listening to all um, of you and you uh, considered us um, for the launch of this book tushar sir madisha yes. awesome uh, experience that you shared with us thank you thank you thank, thank you everyone dr swati Vijayashri, Ullar sir, Sazia, Dr. Gupta, everyone to make my Dantaras truly rich, truly rich, blessed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Thank you. All the best, Tushar. Thank, 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 Thank you, Shazia. Thank you, Swati. Thank you, sir. Shazia, over to you to close the session and tell the audience about what is going to come next through Humans of Pharma platform. Okay. So, uh, uh, before going to the humans of pharma and everything, uh, more about the book. The book is, as uh, Tushar sir already stated, the book is currently available at Amazon.com. You can go there and, uh, you know, excel this uh, medical representative role. Um, and going on, thank you, uh, Tushar sir. I express my gratitude to all speakers and everyone for your presence. On the behalf of Pharmacy Academy, I wish the book see a lot of success, Sushar sir. Thank you. And Thank you.
with the ending note just wanted to share something with every one of you just a moment mm, yes here it is i hope you are all, you all can see my screen so um, i just wanted to welcome every one of you to share your pharma state story pharma story sorry pharma story uh, with us you can write to us at academy at pharmastate.com or whatsapp us at the given number thank you so much and i can stop my screen yeah thank okay. you Thank you. Thank uh, you. On the behalf of Pharmacy Academy, I sincerely thank mm -hmm. and acknowledge each and every one of you for being here, part of our journey of learning and growing. Finally, remember that learning never exhausts the mind. And once again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. We hope to see you in the upcoming webinars. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Happy Diwali and have a nice Happy Diwali day. to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Sir, bye -bye. and related to the next session, bye, sir. Thank you so much. Related to the next session, we are going to take up the hot topic of Gambia uh, episode that has happened. Uh, um, and uh, we are bringing in a panel there uh, where um, this uh, news will be uh, touched upon by experts from different uh, departments of pharma, including uh, marketing, management, and manufacturing, where uh, we can, you know, uh, uh, correct ourselves. Uh, the path lies uh, 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 ahead of us, and we need to, you know, go on this path quite diligently, quite um, uh, not making mistakes. So that is where we are uh, placing this session through Humans of Pharma. This will be the next session uh, from our side with an expert panel discussing the same. So the date is the probable date is 30th October next uh, so Sunday, uh, 11 a.m. So we'll try to bring that, uh, we'll update it in the groups and through mails to everyone. And uh, please keep on registering for the session. And whenever the date is finalized, uh, we will uh, share it with you. Till then, I'll show you a promo and say you a happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wishing you all a very happy Diwali. We'll close the session. Very, very happy Diwali. Swatiya, Swati ji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Thank you, everyone. We are ending the session now. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.